The cyberspace is home to billions of people and is the right platform you need to grow your business. The Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production, and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-711-0290 or 0718-100-235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology, Follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. And you can also check out our website, www.site.org.zw. You can also visit our offices at 45 Moffat Avenue, Hillside. Of this opportunity to expand your business. The cyberspace is home to billions of people and is the right platform you need to grow your business. The Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production, and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-867. 711-0290 or 0718-100-235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology. Follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. And you can also check out our website, www.site.org.zw. You can also visit our offices at 45 Moffat Avenue, Hillside, Lawai. Take advantage of this opportunity to expand your business. The cyberspace is home to billions of people and is the right platform you need. Uh, thank you for adhering to the announcement of the CNC to come back early. Of course, we've eaten five minutes of your time yet already. So, without wasting time, at this moment, we'll have the Deputy Minister Wetu as presented on reviewing, on the review and alignment of the Public Finance Management Act to the Constitution of Zimbabwe, strengthening public financial management systems in Zimbabwe. So, uh, Honorable, Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. His Worship Mayor of Bulwayo, Member of Parliament, Councillor Regional Chairperson, Mr. M. Moyo, Director of Ceremony, Captain of Industries, Member of Media Fraternities, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to address you on the topic on strengthening public financial management system in Zimbabwe. My talking notes will give an outline on the system. Public financial management system is concerned, concerned with how governments manage the budget in its established phase, which includes formulation, approval, and execution. It deals with the set of process and procedure that cover all aspects of expenditure management in government. In addition, it is also interdisciplinary, drawing from economics, 
political science and public administration as well as accounting and auditing. Public finance management relevance is fiscal policy making has involved over time is that shifted as focus from just budgeting process to all aspect of managing public resources, including resource mobilization and debt management, international monetary funds, 2013. Current legislation policy in place to states and public finance management system, Constitution of Zimbabwe, Public Finance Management Act, Chapter 2219, and Audit Officer Act, Chapter 2218, Public Procurement Disposal and Public Asset Act, Chapter 2223, Regulation issued by the Ministry of Finance, the ma main legal framework within which public financial management is exercised its Public Finance Management Act, the Public Finance Management Act specifies the responsibility of the Minister of Ministry of Finance and Economic Development, together with the power he or she may delegate to senior officials. The Act also defines the responsibility of the Secretary and Paymaster General, the Accountant General, and Accounting Officers. The appointment and roles of Accountant General, Internal Auditor, and Audit co Committees are also set out in the Act as the main responsibility of public finance management. Launch of the public expenditure and financial accountability. The government of Zimbabwe launched the public expenditure and finance accountability 2017-2018 assessment and evaluation method. This was designed to prove the government with an overview of key states and the strengths and weaknesses of the public finance management system. The assessment will also give an update of prog progress in public finance management, assist in identifying those parts of the public finance management system in need of future reform, future reform and development. It is designed to prove a public finance management performance at specific points in time using the methodologically that can be replicated in successive assessment giving a summary of change over the time. The launch of public finance act is marked by training for the government officials, development partners and the PFA assessment team, data collection and assessment exercise in the production of Zimbabwe assessment report 2018 will follow the training. Public finance asset assessment paved the way for improved public financial management, enhancing accountability and transparency which will ensure the effective and e efficient use of resources. Implementation of the Public Financial Management Enhancement Program. The government is also implementing project called the Public Finance Management Enhancement Project. It aims to improve financial reporting, internal controls, fiscal transparency, and accountability in government finance in Zimbabwe. Reconfiguration of public finance. All ministry now use the reconfiguration PFMS and about 40 out of about 100 extra budgetary units have also been reconfigured with the remaining 60 due to be completed before the end of 2019. The government is set to complete the rollout of the re reconfigured public finance management system to the remaining 60 extra budgetary units before the end of this year. The update PFMS will also be partly extended to local authorities. The PFMS 
team has designed to portal for local authorities to enable the up uploading of the data into PFMS through an interface. Each of the district in the country will have its own kiosk and eight access points. The concept is about to be piloted in six districts and working with the Department of Central Computing System Services. It is planned that rollout to all districts will be completed by the end of 2019. Alignment of PFMS to IPSAS. The government has implemented the actual base according to alignment, uh, according, according in alignment with the international public sector accounting standards. IPSS, a set of accounting standards issued by the IPSAS, both for the use of used by public sector entities around the world in the preparation of financial statement. The reconfiguration of the PFMS is part of border initiative by the government to enhance accountability within the system by moving from cash accounting to actual accounting. National implementation, implementation strategy and plan was launched and all ministries are now utilizing the reconfiguration PFMS. PFMS in currently set up, set, uh, set up to deliver cash-based financial reporting, however input to the system is on an accrual basis. New chart of accounts. PFMS was redesigned with new chart of accounts based on the government finance statistic manual 2014 in collaboration with the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Significant progress has been made in the rollout. Other measures to strengthen com complement PFMS, budgetary process to be strictly carried out within the budget calendar period. Contingent of budget overruns, controls over commitments and payments and avoid reversal of commitments made. Consistency in budget execution. Adopt a sectoral approach to formulation and monitoring of budget. Undertake the baseline cost projections. Rolling out the PFMS system to cover local authorities and parishes. Migration to full actual accounting. Developing comprehensive reform and program for the reform of state enterprises. Value for money audit should be carried out more frequently. Implementing measures to avoid risks, the risk that funds will be used for their intended purpose, that they will be used without due attention to economy and efficiency. Full implementation of the PFMS will enhance efficient and effective utilization of public resources. It also enhances transparency, accountability, and eliminates distortion in financial reporting. There will be significant saving and cost effectiveness in moving from donor system and ring fence implementation arrangements to focus on improving the capacity of ministries and central government system. Furthermore, countries' ownership of development programs and projects is stronger when its own system rather than externally imposed system are used. Such uses will incentivize the government to focus on strengthening 
is public finance management system. I thank you. That was very brief. Thank you so much. At least we have managed to wait. It in five minutes. The honorable minister donated two minutes. So we now owe three minutes. And then without wasting time again, I will right away call upon a honorable Nikki, a, who happens also to be a member of the Budget, Finance and Economic Development Committee. Um, thank you, everybody. A lot of what I was going to say has been preempted in John's um, presentation and in my own comments in, in answer to or brought out by the gentleman over there. What I would like to say is that the rights of Zimbabwean citizens have been consistently abrogated under the, the, the rights enshrined in the 2013 Constitution, have been consistently abrogated using the lack of fiscal space is the constant plea. However, we do see within the budget a bias towards the Ministry of Defence, for example, which doesn't, whilst it may guarantee our sovereignty, I better say, um, doesn't actually bring welfare, it would appear, to the, to the Zimbabwean population. Whereas the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, and the Ministry of Social Welfare should be the top priority ministries, particularly at this time, the Ministry of Social Welfare, given the levels of poverty and deprivation within our communities. So the question is, Public finance management, yes. However, corruption, tax evasion, and the informal economy cannot grow the fiscus. The government also, if we look at all the legislation, we look at the parastatals, government itself is too much in business, the business it's not supposed to be in. It's supposed to be in the business of upholding the constitution and providing the social services to, this, to the communities of Zimbabwe. So for me, it's a circle. Yes, public finance management requires an overhaul, but its initial overhaul comes from a simplified system, lack of corruption. Over there, I have, as I say, five pieces of legislation. One of them is the public entities for the gentleman from, from Zesa and from Emma, public entities. Act, which is as thick as the Public Finance Management Act. There is also an SI which governs and lays out who are accounting officers. But yet the other day we heard the PERMSEC for the Ministry of Finance, which is the primary caretaker of public finance management, bemoaning the fact that there is only one chartered accountant in the whole of government. What kind of statement does that portray? I mean, I then had a discussion with the lady from the Ministry of Education from a school. Co accountants come in different sizes, shapes, and forms, and with different qualifications. But equally, we have a bloated, our, one of our biggest things is that the budget primarily pay, pays civil servant salaries. We have these bloated ministries where now we're going to turn around and say, but we don't even have qualified accountants. How do we have public finance management if we don't have a dynamic, qualified personnel and system to deal with all the issues that surround public finance management? So for Zimra, I say, the informal economy is one of the biggest deterrents. It's a necessary evil in Zimbabwe as we stand now, but it's, it's, it's one of the biggest deterrents to the growth of the fiscus because collecting tax, which is what the 2% is now trying to do, but we equally see a disconnect. A lot of the ministries, including the Ministry of Health, have only just, after three months into the year, had releases from Treasury. How ministries don't function well if they 
if they don't get, it's great, we have a budget and it says a ministry gets $50 million, but if they don't actually get the money, then what do they do? And at the end of each year, in what they call the blue book, there is the consistent figures of what ministries don't actually get. So primarily what is paid is, is salaries and wages. And the civil service from 2013 till last year doubled, actually. So while we now have, what is it called, austerity for prosperity, how, how when you've doubled your civil service wage bill, do you achieve prosperity from austerity? And whose austerity? The poorest levels and people within our society are suffering the most, actually, out of that. It's very, for me, it's over-legislated, unbalanced, and requires deep, deep thought. One of the issues we hear about is debt. We now hear that Tel One has a massive debt, which government would like, rather like Zisco debt and all the other debts to assume. We should examine that. We should scream loudly. Why? Why is this a constant process and a never, it would appear a never ending process? And for my friends from Emma, yeah, there was a person at one of your other things who said there's a disconnect between resources and GDP. The resources that are being extracted from this country, are they actually being accounted for? And how much damage are we actually doing to our environment in the process of informal extraction of resources? I, I just think that we're overburdened in, this country, in Zimbabwe with questions that don't have answers. And yes, a legislative framework is one issue, but as I said before, as good as a piece of legislation is, it's only as good as its implementation. And without the political will, and without the will of the people of Zimbabwe as a whole, not divided into groups, but to realize we're all in the same boat, and if we don't row our boat together, we will all sink. That is one thing for sure is true. So we need, we need our own will as well as the political will, and that takes information, dynamic movement and a consistent process. It seems to me also a process little known to Zimbabweans is, is the petitioning to parliament of issues. Every ministry, except I might say some of the ones that fall under the Senate, have committees with oversight or like budget and finance. And you as an individual citizen can petition parliament, that committee, to investigate any issue that you feel requires investigation. So these are processes which Zimbabweans need to learn to utilize. I think that the gentleman sitting there was at our, when we had our budget consultation, if I'm not mistaken, when we came to Bulaway with the budget and finance, I think so, yes. And we talked about, there was a young man, you talk about youth issues, there was a young man who said, the next war will be about water. And that actually is a fact. We are water deficient, but Zesa are busy gobbling potable Bulawayo water in the power station because they're desperate to keep power. Why are we not exploiting other resources? The methane gas in Mac North, you talk about marginalization. If that was developed correctly, as it should be, we, we would have an uplift of Matt North. We talk about another debt trap, Batoka Gorge, is 2.4 billion debt. Okay, only half to Zimbabwe, half to Zambia. It doesn't matter. Why do we want to do a project which will affect our environment, will affect tourism, and incur debt when we have alternatives? The students, these are the things you should be thinking about. And as a young generation, they, that is the future. The future is in the environment, and if it is degraded now to survive, where will we be? Sorry, I know I've gone right off topic, but to me it's a holistic problem. It's not one issue, it's a circle, and it's a vicious downward spiral for Zimbabwe at the moment. That seems to have little answers. 
Blame the, blame the M MPs? Yes, maybe. I don't know. We try. We talk. We do the things we're supposed to do. We do our oversight role. We need the people. And every MP who goes to Parliament should also understand he doesn't go there or she doesn't go there to say, I only represent. You represent your entire constituency. And that applies across the political divide. That they should understand that they are there to represent everybody in Zimbabwe. And that is, is in a sense, where the political will fails. Thank you. I think uh, with these guys in, in parliament, the way they are using time, we are hoping that even our resources, we are hoping that our resources are in safe hands. Uh, thank you for, for those presentations. who we'll jump straight to Zimra, and then we'll have yield 10 minutes each, so that will take us to exactly 12 o'clock. So it's 22, uh, you finish at 10 to, and then hand over to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Master of Ceremonies. All protocols observed. Um, I'm, I'm, my presentation, uh, actually, what has happened to it is most of the issues have been covered, and I, 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 I note the Deputy Minister covered some of the issues that are on, on, on my presentation. Um, what I, I, I need to quickly do is to, 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 to take you through the definition. I'm sure John had actually presented the issue of the definition. So from the definition, I will be able to explore the, the nitty gritties of the issues that would be relevant and are practical. Uh, what is public financial management? Uh, public financial management refers to the set of laws, and uh, we have uh, several laws that, that, that we have in, in, in terms of um, the, the, I'm sure uh, the Honorable MP indicated the, and, and the Deputy Minister indicated the laws. Then the rules, what are the rules, what, sh what one should do and what one should not do. And systems, and I think this is the main area, because my area is uh, that of strengthening uh, the PFM uh, management systems. What, what, what systems are we talking about here? The systems we are talking about, uh, a, a system is either um, manual or it's, it's automated. So it, it comprises uh, people who, who utilize uh, the system. Uh, we have the, the resources like hardware, if you are on an automated, or the paperwork that uh, which could be receipt books and the like. Uh, it, we, we, we also, it says, end processes, which means there is a series of events that you need to, to be evaluating to say which give you the, the product. And these systems, so the set of laws, rules, systems, and processes are used by sovereign nations to, one, mobilize uh, revenue, two, allocate public funds, three, undertake public uh, spending and account for funds and audit results. Uh, in, in terms of, of, of given the, the limited time that I have, so the, 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 the main central issue is when a policy is, 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 is given to whichever, be it a, a, a government entity, or the government itself, uh, lo local authority, when a policy is developed, obviously there is wide consultation which is expected from 
the academic body, academia and research bodies, political parties, and the civil society. So the, the, the consultative process takes place. And uh, in, in, so generally, when we have the policy which we have to implement, and in, in this case, we have our uh, PFMS being the, the real issue. So the PMF is, is, has got about three areas which the Deputy Minister hi highlighted. That is budget formulation. In, in, in budget formulation, that, that's bu budget formulation, implementation, auditing, and the, the legislative review. Um, with regards to the uh, legal and institutional framework, the questions that have to be asked is, uh, is the issue of the legislative framework, is it, is it being ignored or it's just weak or why do we have the, 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 the poor compliance? I think that's, those are the, the issues that uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament indicated. Do we have the, the right system? The questions start, start get to be asked. Do we have the right people in the, those particular places uh, who are doing the work? I, I'm, I'm, I, may, I might need to, to refer to what he earlier on alluded to, to say, is, is Zimra in particular, I'm, I'm, I'm centralizing to, 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 to a particular organization. Why is Zimra so rich? Zimra is guided by the legislation that is Developed. It's either it comes through the legislature or it's through the, the ministerial directives where we have statutory instruments. And even the constitution itself. Um, uh, if I unpack the, the systems in Zimbra, in terms of uh, people and uh, the, 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 the accounting system, we, we are on a computer-based uh, system. Well, it has its challenges, but at least it's, 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 it's a system that is there. And uh, in terms of the people, I, I'm sure in, in the, most of our officers have degrees, those who do the assessment. So in terms of the people, we have the right the caliber in terms of but the question is, why do we have a, a poor performance? That's the, that, that's the question that needs to be asked. It's now the element of culture which tricks me to say, do we have the right culture? How do we change? You know, it takes time. So that, those are the issues that we need to, if we go to any of those uh, organizations, we just need to look at the, the systems, is it manual? Manual systems are susceptible to fraud, and I, I remember the master of ceremony indicated leakages. So those leakages uh, normally come as a result of the poor systems, which need to be strengthened. How do you strengthen the systems? You need to come up with your, I've indicated that there are policies. So you draw procedures and instructions to, so for those people who actually implement that particular uh, policy to, to effectively uh, make sure that such leakages, and if there is a leakage, we should be in a position to say that we are addressing this particular leakage. So that, that, that's, that, that's the issue with regards to the systems. Um, in, in, in PFMS, we have, uh, do we have a, a budgetary process? I've said budget formulation. The budgetary process should be a, a consultative, and I'm sure we do quite well in this area, but we, we, we still need to improve uh, in the consultative processes. Because if the consultative processes are improved, we, 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 we get to be uh, as, as, uh, attaining the results which we get as a result in, in 
the results in, with respect to the performance levels that we are, 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 are intend to, to achieve. That is poverty reduction. Oh, well, I'm being... Anyway, uh, let me go on to the aspect of the implementation aspect. I think we, of late, we are on a cash budgeting system. But that cash budgeting system is not working well uh, given the, the limited funding that we have. Um, and as highlighted by the Deputy Minister, there is uh, the issue of moving from the cash accounting system to uh, the, uh, uh, the, the accrual-based accounting system. The, let, let me quickly move on to the critical aspect, which is um, that of uh, the integrated public financial management system. This is the computer-based management system where the Minister of Finance is saying uh, it would want to make sure that all uh, entities, including local authorities, that collect funds should be on a click of a button, I mean the, the e-governance e program, they would want to say we know the amount that they have collected and the, the accountability aspect becomes the issue of your systems, that is the, the, govern, the, the, the governance systems of, of the institution, management and controls being in place. And then from there, you, they will then say, are you managing well? Do you have your internal audit and your external audit that comes and, and do the necessary evaluations? And at the end of the day, I'm sure the uh, external audit and, and legislator, legislative, legislators with their committees, they evaluate the, uh, using an oversight of, of all how the resources were used. Uh, at the end of the day, we, we come up with let me just read, um, I think there's one aspect where I, in my presentation, I had, that becomes the closure. How do we know a, a PMF system is performing adequately or not? Uh, ideally, one would uh, assess the PFMS system uh, simply by measuring performance against, I'm sure, we measured the performance against the principles that John highlighted. That is of equity, fairness, accountability, and transparency, all those issues. And um, a, just quickly roll out, yeah. A, since the 1990s, 1990s, DFID and other donors have, have devoted an unprecedented level of attention to the reform of PMF systems in developing and transition countries, yet results have been mixed. With some exceptions, reform progress has been slow and the benefits elusive. Nevertheless, some countries have, more, uh, success, have been more successful in implementing the PFMS reforms than others. What explains the difference is performance. So basically, uh, with regards to Salvonan. Salvonan, I think uh, I'll try and be short. I understand I'm left with a few minutes. Uh, thank you, Zim Code, for affording us the opportunity as young people to speak on critical issues that affect our future. To all the leaders and everyone, all protocols observed, allow me to speak to some of the issues uh, coming from a youth NGO perspective or for youth interest issues. I will deal with the elephant in the room. I think systems are made by people and systems are broken by people. 
as uh, some people have already said, I think also John mentioned this, we are good at coming up with uh, policy papers, with legislative frameworks, with a whole lot of stuff as Zimbabweans. But the missing link comes to issues of implementation and the buck stops with the citizens. Fine, we can point fingers at our legislative members of parliament, at our councillors and everyone else. But if we want to strengthen public finance systems in Zimbabwe, we need firstly constitutional awareness for our citizens. We speak of a constitution, we speak of, for example, the last speaker, not to be critical of anyone, but we speak of budgetary consultations. Those in academia will tell you sometimes consultation is by virtue of attending a workshop. We come here, we sit, and people say we were consulted. Were consulted. So consultation sometimes are low order. We need to engage more to be deliberative in terms of our engagement. I know for a fact uh, we have discussed this with young people in Bulawa to say, why is it when Bulawa City Council calls for a consultative meeting for young people at small city hall, not so many of us turn up. And each and every time we have gotten back to this issue to say we are being consulted and our involvement in the budgetary process ends at consultation uh, level. Not much is done in terms of review, in terms of monitoring those budgets. But uh, why, why does public uh, finance management, why are public uh, finance management systems important? I think they're important because they speak to trust or the trust that we should have as citizens in our government. Frankly, most of us don't trust the government of Zimbabwe because, uh, like others spoke, we know Zimbabwe to have a lot of scandals. For example, luxury gate. For example, I'm sorry, parliamentarians, but press has said you held um, too little ransom when it comes to the cars that you want. I'll speak to luxury, luxury gate during the government of national unity because that government does not exist, and I think I'm safe as a young person to speak uh, in that regard. You would remember we spent 20 million as Zimbabweans paying for cars, yet we could have split that amount of money to education, to the health sector, a million each for each province, and I think that was a disservice. So why does uh, public finance management uh, matter for us? It matters for young people because it is where our bread and butter issues come in. We need, like I said, constitutional literacy in terms of identifying our role and cementing or strengthening the role of citizens in terms of how we contribute towards the budgets. For example, one way we can do this would be to have a gender responsive budget for us to check the expenses that we have as um, as government of Zimbabwe, as a nation, in terms of how they speak to gender dynamics, how much money are we spending uh, with uh, respect to the different genders in our society. As you can see, uh, this website is called Resource Projects. I think I'm just going to skip to that part to show and locate young people uh, in terms of um, how we can strengthen these systems. This is an example of a portal, if you could just um, click view payment data and try and locate Zimbabwe. This is an electronic system. Uh, I know Zimbabwe's economy is an extractive economy. Can you just click, um, please go back to the top and click the section written project country. And then under project payments on the top, please click and search for government agency. No? Uh, no? Sorry? Project payments, that one, yes. Click government and agency payments. So, in this day and age, access to information shouldn't be a difficult thing. Can you please repress agency country for us to see Zimbabwe? Yes. Access to information shouldn't be a big deal. Young people are able to utilize information and show us or give us the tools to trace the money. Like I was saying, Zimbabwe is a, an extractive economy and we rely mostly on natural resources. 
So our ability as citizens in this day and age should be strengthened by access to information. For example, this page shows to you which companies paid how much to the government of Zimbabwe. If you scroll down, you would note at a certain point money was paid to Gwanda Rural District Council. So with such information, with such information, we are better placed to go to our councillors and say, Gwanda Rural District Council, uh, Caledonia paid 168000 to your coffers. How much money has been spent on social economic development? Because we can't talk about public finance management without linking it to social economic development, without linking it to human rights, without linking it to economic justice issues. So with such portals of data, we are better placed to ask the key questions and to demand solutions as citizens. So this is just but an example of the mechanisms that we need to incorporate when we uh, engage in the process of reviewing our system as a country. And lastly, we tend to avoid this question or pay lip service when we speak about political will. We say for everything to go on smoothly, we need political will. But we abdicate that role as citizens to the leaders. Political will should come from the bottom. It means me and you visiting. If uh, uh, Honorable Watson mentioned that there's a mechanism for petitioning parliament. And as young people, we've always said, central government or, or parliament is too far from our reach. We can't access Parliament of Zimbabwe as, as, as youthful citizens because it might mean having to travel for a parliamentary portfolio committee meeting to Harare. And we don't have those funds. But if we were to put to task our local leaders and engage them and petition them, for example, to disclose their assets. Many a times we speak about corruption, we look at the big scandals, and we don't lobby and engage local leaders to disclose their assets, to disclose their wealth before office and even after office for us to be able to say, okay, you went into power and we think you were a servant leader and you had integrity. So many a times we speak of political will and abdicate and leave it at the top echelons of power, but we don't focus on the lower level where we can access these things. And lastly, in the politics of the day, I think strongly to those that are repertory, we need a devolution of power uh, in, within our public finance management system because we think these questions, like I said in the example of us accessing Parliament of Zimbabwe, would be better placed if we are taking to task the local or provincial councils of this country to say central government dispersed this amount of money to you. You collected this amount of money in terms of levies or fees. How much money are you using for social economic development? Because there is nothing else that is key apart from social economic development and uh, economic justice for our people. And with this, I think my time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Tago. And tell us, Chela, my presenter, as it is big pumper. Thank you so much. At least. This cut is in the civil. We were behind time when you came in, but uh, we've managed to recover. Actually, we are spot on according to program it. So the next 20 minutes, we are then going to delve into our interview to then interrogate our presentations that we've had today. I will not summarize any of the presentations. We have seen to I think what is apparent from all the presentations is that into the discussion, I would like us, I would like to question us on two things. Uh, actually, it's one. When looking at problems, it is important to separate people from your problem. 
Right. It's not about who is wrong, who is right. But what is wrong, what is right. So let them start it to our mind. We don't want to be avoiding things. We say this is the mortality. If a crack open, we get used to it. It's fine. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I think um, the first thing that I'd like to raise is that um, this is a very informative discussion that we're having. And uh, my contribution will be to the parliamentarians. Um, I was reading the discussion paper and it spoke of parliamentary oversight, which is not present in the current PFM Act. Um, they also made a recommendation that it should be more in line with the Kenyan PFM Act, which looks at parliamentary oversight. I think it's in section two or section eight of the Kenyan Act that talks about parliamentary oversight. And I think that's one thing that we really need as a country is that parliamentarians are the representation of the people because they are directly elected by the people. So we need parliamentary oversight in the process of uh, public financial management as a check and balance so that the executive does not willy nilly spend money without being, uh, being held accountable for it. And to also to touch on Honorable um, Watson Brown's contribution is that in that parliamentary oversight, we need people who are capable of conducting that oversight. She's an accountant. She needs people around her who understand the legal implications of the documents that she's dealing with. So we need to strengthen Parliament itself, not only the committees, but the people, the subcommittees and the people who are engaging in those committees to make sure that we have professional people who really understand the legal implications, the accounting implications, so that we can have a legal framework that is in line with international standards. So I think parliamentary oversight, for me, is, is one of the biggest issues that really need to be put in place in the, in the uh, Public Finance Management Act so that we can have checks and balances and a proper separation of powers to make sure that when the executive oversteps is bound, they are put into account by parliament and the citizens themselves. Thanks. Where do we meet? Sing at people who join my best to introduce you so that you see your people. Yes, if it's not. Yeah, I would like to say something. Thank you. Uh, my 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 uh, intervention is to that as we as, as we engage, can we focus on how we can uh, would like to come out of this place with uh, specific and particular recommendations that we can actually document and present, uh, taking on the uh, recommendation from Honourable Watson that we've got a right and an opportunity to petition Parliament would like to document uh, issues from this gathering, present them before Parliament and in the processes of uh, uh, alignment of the uh, PFM Act. So, can we focus on, on specific areas? If you're able to identify, say, in this area, in terms of local authorities, in terms of this particular sector, can we be so uh, This is what we are, we, we are here to gather, so that we can then uh, come out of this place, say, these are the voices of citizens. These are the concerns that have been raised. These are the gaps that have been identified. Thank you. Niawonga, Mr. Mota Reta. Um, it has been alluded to by. to specifics. Um, there's the issue of uh, the pattern of sharing resources with the, the, between the present citizens and the future generations. I would think that we need to provide for that in our, in our public finance uh, act. Because what I've seen is that we are exhausting everything, forgetting about the the future generations. 
Then the other issue is on supplementary budgets. I haven't heard, John, anywhere in this country where whenever there's a new program that has come in, like the, the Nyanga Chimani Money, sorry, Chimani Money disaster. Yes, a lot of money is being poured there. Where are we getting that money from? And there are a lot of programs that just come out and we, we just get money from, I don't know where from. So it's very, very important that we, we need to strengthen the issue of supplementary budgets in our financial management. Act. Thank you. Thanks to the speakers. My comment is maybe just general, but I, 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 I would have loved um, if we had gone deeper on the act itself and identified the key gaps. I, I, I feel it's never in us years. I'm so I would have loved to get it deeper. Say, dissect as if the Lamar kept some corner and now the policy paper in the corner, but we'll see the bad Lamar recommendations. So that man be a minimum vending, I didn't see a corner. Near Kuman in Deva Begal. Jalop the one you have loved to put at least maybe if it's possible. If that uh, act as a reformer who could get it in local languages. So I just have to say, Nigaman Baval and was like public uh, finance management act, which hold Konoko to someone. Was things that I am seeing at. Yes, John said that everyone is a, is a, is a, is, a, is a shareholder because yeah, but that it takes the number vendors three percent presumptive tax. Uh, but what does it mean as public, public, public finance management? So we need then to say, okay, we need to put it in a language that is understood by uh, so that when we engage, they understand what we are talking about. Those are my recommendations. So if we can get a paper uh, that identifies key gaps, for me, I would appreciate. I'm not sure if that is possible. I hate saying that EIMT is already doing some work. So we could then look at what they have produced and then uh, work on a kind of a, a paper of some sort. Yes, uh, <coughs> thank you. My, my question is that uh, generally people to create gray areas, even if there are explicit uh, guidelines and, uh, and legislation, uh, there is a tendency to deliberately confuse that. Through it has become an ethic on our part to 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 throw integrity out the window. I'll give a general example, not that I can give details of. But there seems to be a mix-up, for example, at a much higher level. The fiscal regime and the monetary regime. To an extent that the role of the Ministry of Finance versus the role of the Reserve Bank is, is so confused as if there is no legislation governing the two. To an extent that uh, certain policies are pronounced by the wrong people. For example, the monetary and the fiscal. There seems to be an overlap when it should be clear who handles what and there should be no relationship or interference between the two. So in that case, it makes it difficult for monitoring, even if the monitoring mechanisms are there, the checking mechanisms that I spoke about earlier are there it becomes difficult to, to, to then implement them because there's, set, there's, there's always a provision for certain special powers to override certain things. That should be looked at. Thank you.
I think it is going to be informal. It's more about the information, access to information about this uh, public finance management. Because at the same time, we are contributing what we call presumptive tax to the local government and the government. Right? But most of the people, they don't know what, uh, what does that mean. So we also need a policy framework so that these people, they know because they are contributing more. But at the same time, they don't know where this money is going where. It is used for what? So we need a uh, consultation money to the informal sector so that people they can understand more about this public financial management. Thank you. I'm hearing consultation, consultation. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Appear somehow. Uh, I haven't introduced myself. Uh, for some reason, Florence didn't uh, give me a chance to introduce myself. So my name is Tafat Wachukumbu. I work with Zimcode as a social economic analyst there. Uh, there. There's a question that came from Mike, um, specifically on... Um, the specific sections of the Public Finance Management Act that needs reform. And uh, I don't know if, um, as a facilitator, I, I should uh, probably take the house through, or maybe I'll get a chance to, to just run through that. questions maybe which can be verified by, by uh, what's on there. The first issue is, uh, isn't it you fall in the, in the parliamentary budget, finance and economic planning department. The first issue is, what currency are we budgeting our economy, first and foremost? Then second, uh, if whatever currency, the other issue is, uh, 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 the other gentleman, the table, he raised that issue there. What were those monies? Are TGS or, or, or US dollar, whatever? And then, uh, uh, because uh, if these monies are in US dollars, then why is it that when we sell gold to the fidelity printers, they give us in other TGS? And uh, also, what I want to ask is, they're giving us 70% of our money in US dollars, then the other parents in that time it was born. Now that they have changed it to other TGS, they're giving us 55% uh, of our hard end cash, and then they transfer 45% of our hard end cash in whatever that name is, because I don't know it. Uh, since I went to school, I've never heard of, of that name. And then finally, I wanted to find out, uh, I think it's the, you're the same person who talked about the issue of uh, the president's office being not, not uh, accounted. How much do we know, uh, how much is, this, is being leaked? Because it's part of the bleeding of our economy. Okay. And also transparency is not, uh, is not there. Then finally, uh, are the cancer are still there? Why is it that you repair our roads whenever there is trade fair? Why don't you leave it like that so that the other people, the dignitaries, who come to open our trade fair will see, we'll see road exactly road. the state of affairs of our city? Thank you. Uh, one last question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, close the. Close the. Uh, no, I just want. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you. Uh, I first wanted to comment on e skills gap. Would, in as much as we have the ministry that is looking into public finance management, like what honourable ministers, honourable member said, uh, the minister said there is one accountant in the government. 
Therefore, do we have people that can implement this? Because we need accountants. Already there is a skills gap within the government itself. So are they going to be able to implement what we are talking about? Then we have got issues of assuming debt of parastatals. Like recently with the issue of Zisco Steel, parastatals, they run into debt, the government takes over. Does the government have the resources? Why can't government manage parastatals, parastatals so that they get, don't get into debt because they assume that date and then they cannot even pay. So we are having problems. Our parastatals, they are not accountable. There is no responsibility. Because by us, at the end of the day, the government is going to assume our debt. What is the government doing to manage parastatals? And then thereafter, we will move straight from our presenters. Okay. Okay. My first one is uh, I wanted to find out from Watson to what extent do you think the consultative meetings that we are doing are enough to get the views of the people at grassroots level? And uh, what informs the budget? Because the budget, in my view, must be informed by the actual needs on the ground. But we've seen budgets where the military, for instance, gets the lion's share of the budget, yet the country is not at war. Because in my view, a budget is a financial plan which should be informed by actual uh, needs on the ground. And then uh, we've got other issues. For instance, uh, my friend from Zesa said, they are owed a lot by people on the ground. I mean consumers, but you also owe us as this, because when there is no meter, for instance, electricity goes for, I remember at one point we had a power cut for about a week. So my question is, where does that money for the period that we had no electricity go? And how are we compensated as consumers? Because when that electricity is not there, we, we lose a lot of things, refrigerated stuff and other things. The same applies to my sister from education. You chase away children that have not paid fees. But when they pay fees after they, they have stayed home, what happens to that other period when the child was not at school? How, how, how is the child compensated in that, in that regard? Thank you. Mm. Yeah, right. 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 And the consultations I agree with you. Mm. Having done my first round of budget and finance consultations for the, the last budget, I agree that actually the views of the people were generally not reflected mm. in the and their concerns. Although a lot of the concerns that come through the budget consultation process actually relate to local government as much as to central government generally. But as my young friend pointed out, consultation is not a tool. It doesn't, unless it's utilized properly, it doesn't help. As regards to what currency are we in? Very good question. When we were budgeting, the minister was pointed to the wall. What currency? He said US dollars then. Then we changed. We said no, now it's RTGS dollars, now it's RTGS dollars. So the budget itself is in RTGS dollars. We've heard about a supplementary budget process. It's coming. The council are already in trouble, and they're already doing a consultative process around a supplementary budget. Plus the fact that the impact of the 2% tax on local councils was never taken when they did their budget in September last year, was not taken into account, and they are now faced with a massive problem with the 2%, the cost of the 2% tax to them. Sorry, what else? Devolution. Yes, people, devolution is an answer if we do it right. Consultation. Be aware of devolution is coming. You, you said how you want to see the act, you want to know 
word by word, line by line. Here it is, read it. If you can understand it, have a good day. Devolution is going to look like this. And if it isn't done right, it will not work for the people. And that is a fact. And as for 55%, 70%, you're lucky you're not the tobacco farmers. They started at one thing, went to another thing, and then got nothing, and then had to fight again. The Reserve Bank, you are right, the Reserve Bank is almost like an autonomous body that operates without the Ministry of Finance, and that hence the, the Reserve Bank Governor's quip that the Minister himself needs a workshop. Well, I don't know who needs a workshop, but they need to work in tandem and they need to work in harmony, and they actually need to work to the benefit of the people of Zimbabwe, and the Reserve Bank is notorious, and it is currently under discussion the quasi-fiscal activities of the Reserve Bank is currently under discussion by the Public Accounts Committee, of which I'm not a member, thank goodness. So, and school fees, they, there's no recompense. Sorry about that. And government, be aware again, we now have the Educational Amendment Act, where government are saying they're going to scrap school fees. School fees is not where schools get their money from. Schools get their money from school development associations. And actually, as parents, that's what you should be looking at. And we're creating a system where Milton Junior School, Coglin Junior School, for example, are looking fabulous because of their development associations. If you go to Binga, schools are in a dilapidated condition because parents don't have money. We have created a new kind of discrimination in Zimbabwe based on money. And that's really what this is all about. We also both just realized we had never talked about impunity goes hand in hand with corruption. And you have to deal with both issues. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Honourable for those words. I, I think I'm just going to try and engage in what Mike was saying about us looking at the technicalities of the uh, Public Finance Management Act. I think in terms of specific recommendations, we should not seek to review the act in isolation because like uh, the discussion we've been having as a panel, we have to look into the Reserve Bank uh, Act as well. We have to look into all associated pieces of legislation which relate to how we manage our finances as a country. So um, there was a question directed to me with regards to the currency that uh, the data that you can see on on the screen. Uh, I can't answer on behalf of resource projects, but we can assume based on the dates that most of the money was in, in, in US dollars. But uh, a, a point to note is that once we have access to such information which tells you 100 or 1 million was paid into a particular government agency or a particular mining project or an extractive project paid a certain amount of money to a local authority, we are better placed to ask those questions and to demand those answers. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I would want to respond to the aspect on uh, presumptive tax. Uh, what, I mean, you would want to understand how it's, it's, it's being accounted for. Uh, if, 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 if you are paying to councils in, in with particular reference uh, to councils, that, that, that money is remitted to Zimra. And finally, it will go to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. And then from there, it's distributed. Like I highlighted, uh, a, when the minister comes up with a budget, that the, those, those monies that we would have collected from uh, fees collected by ministries, what we would have collected is Zimra. So as an agent, we just remit it to the Consolidated Revenue Fund and it's distributed there one. Uh, then I would also want to quickly respond on the issue of, of what currents. Yes, I, I attended an ICAS seminar where the PAB as a, a means PAP has actually issued guidelines on how to, to do it. But I think the, the, the major challenge is the, the, is the legal route and the uh, accounting standard route of reporting. But the issue is 
as a government, with effect from the 22nd of February, when the, the, the issue of the RTGS dollar came in, it means the legislation says you should account for whatever we have collected in, in RTGS dollar. That becomes our reporting and functional currency. So that's, that's, that's the explanation on, 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 on what currents. I would want to attempt his um, question on, on the issue of the, uh, what's that, the money that you get, which you, you, you receive in, in US dollar, and you are given a portion. I think what you need to appreciate is um, mining companies uh, get rebates when they acquire equipment from abroad, which is an incentive to make sure that uh, you produce. I think what, what we, we don't have in the country is the production. That's, that's the, the ma major challenge we have where we, we get uh, the, the fiscal deficit. Uh, the, the, the current account and the uh, deficit. And um, So what, 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 what will be happening is the Reserve Bank is saying we are giving you incentive to, incentives to produce, but at the end of the day, they also need to balance uh, what they would have um, given you vis-a-vis -vis what you get. When, when the foreign currency gets into this uh, country, it's part of the GDP. And being part of the GDP, what it means is we, it's counted as the production that we have actually done. So there's that issue where they would want to, to, to make sure that you continuously operate and that distributive uh, function will be taking place by, by, by doing such an, an, an act. Um, that's gold sales. I think the issue of displaying gold, I think samples are allowed at ZITF, if my memory serves me. But maybe you may need to get clarity with the fidelity printers if you you may need to exhibit on those particular aspects. Um, I think that. Mm -hmm. uh, one last Sorry. Also, with regard to um, the oversight roles of committees, yes, they did. And from what my own personal observation is, they meander. Whereas, if you petition on a particular issue, you direct the view of the committee to a specific topic to investigate and to they're obliged to report to Parliament within a certain time frame. And that's actually why petitioning Parliament is actually quite important. Thank you. Thank you, But thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, right away I will end over to facilitate. I think the last session is um, recommendations. Uh, over to you. Bro. Thank you very much, Ndovini. Um, there is a, an issue that was raised by you, Mike. Your S is a Hestalen Ayo, City Luke Tama sections of the Constitution, Uguti Atini Uchkumbu Muyo Oza Sienzela logo. And then after that, says Kanye Lili, since it's Tong Kona Ikomi Tile Ikoni Zawizo Sbuza, Sfunut Sibelarama recommendations. Uguti, what can we add to that is important because we're doing AMA rounds. Sitata ama people's views. So after this, sizakela ama recommendations to say what else should be included in this act. Eli wona ngati kagunja kaguko nyabo.
And uh, I think John has spoken to issues of principles of public finance management act. And uh, those in the act, those in the constitution being more comprehensive than what we can see in section three of the public finance management act, hence the need to incorporate all the principles that John has spoken to. And also include section um, 17 one in terms of gender balance and equity. I think the public finance management act is no provision for gender balance and equity, hence um, gender responsive budgeting is not part of the public finance management act as it stands. Then also the issue of domestication of international instruments. I think they talk about international instruments on uh, the accounting standards and so on and so forth, which also have to be incorporated into the public finance management act. Florence, you can go to the next one. And even in Santa Clever, we also have the Santa Protocol uh, financial investment, which speaks about uh, the debt to GDP ratio threshold of 60%, but in Zimbabwe, our threshold ratio is 70%. So there's also need to align that. So the alignment to the principles, I think you can go to the next one. Then um, also the issue of um, the role of parliament. Place it in section constitution. But I think the previous speakers have spoken about the uh, excessive role of the minister in terms of management of public funds. And uh, so the constitution should all, I mean, the public and management act specifically.
to, to, to devolve the budget. Uh, but currently, I think we don't have the framework for what the commission yet, which, which means that it cannot come into effect without the framework. Move. And once we devolve the budget, then it gives the mandate of Parliament to oversee the operations of, of local authorities, including the audit function. Uh, though already the Auditor General is already auditing the local authorities and state owned enterprises, but they are not part of the Public Finance Management Act, so it has to be incorporated. Um, I think I've spoken to this, you can move. Yeah, then in terms of um, public consultations, I think someone has spoken to this. And normally, public consultations take place uh, probably a week before the budget is announced, which means people have limited time to contribute. They are rushed through the process, probably has a shame to just ensure that we consulted people, but without uh, taking their input into account. And uh, based on our engagements in Gwen and Tari, people were actually saying that now, the consultation is just a process. People raise their issues, but they don't find their way into the budget. So there should be a framework that ensures that when people's concerns are raised, they appear in the budget. If you look into the 2019 national budget statement, its preamble, the first part, talks about what people raised. But when you get into the, it's just a one page, which, which summarizes what people say. But when you get into the budget, those issues are not addressed. There's two issues of uh, poverty eradication and so on and so forth. But the budget only speaks about austerity for prosperity, how do they squeeze people in terms of taxation, and cut social spending. Um, yeah. I would say also issues of commissions. We have uh, chapter 12 institutions, which were introduced in the, into the constitution. But they are also not covered in the Public Finance Management Act, so they have to be covered in equally the same manner as local authorities are being covered in terms of submission of their budgets to Parliament, reports to Parliament, and also having their audits, don't uh, audit financial uh, reports. Uh, with the draws from the consolidated revenue fund, I think. The gentleman from Zimbra also talked about the uh, public finance management system and how uh, the consolidated revenue fund should be used. And um, section 302 of the Constitution requires that money withdrawn from the fund must be paid only to the person or to whom the payment is due. So sometimes uh, the previous auditor general's reports talks about irregularities with regard to how the consolidated revenue fund is being expended and hence the need to, to incorporate that into, into the public finance management act. Um, so, okay, move. Move. Um, then withdraws special warrants for unforeseen expenditures. And the recommendation is to amend section 242 of the PNL Act and to align the statutes to the Constitution in relation to the drawings for special warrants. I think in the case of uh, probably the cycle itself, there should be a limit. Uh, I think it's one and a half. The, the limit it should not exceed one and a half of the national total budget. So citizens should also want the government to account for funds that are channel towards unforeseen circumstances, they shouldn't exceed one and a half percent of the total budget. And that has to be cooperated in the public finance management act so that it takes effect. Uh, in terms of um, cash management, I think you also talked about the reviews in the public finance management systems. And uh, I think you should also notice that there are certain processes which the government has already embarked on before the public finance management act has been repealed. And uh, so I think the process should have been 
the amendment of the public management act before the, the specific systems being improved. Uh, then the issue of safeguarding public uh, funds, uh, specifically in terms of section 308, one of the constitution, uh, it speaks about public funds and the state owned property which is to be guarded jealously by the responsible authorities. And uh, so, section of the public management act, section 2, should now also include definitions of what public funds are and what uh, public property uh, is. And also, incorporate provisions relating to obligations of public officials to safeguard those uh, resources and um, property. No. Um, then in terms of detection of breaches and disciplining of punishment of persons responsible for loss of or destruction of public funds or property. I think we have talked about the court the general's report. We get that on an annual basis. There are people who are implicated in the mismanagement, corruption cases, and um, all forms of abuse. But then the current public management act does not speak to the specific actions that are to be taken against the perpetrators uh, of such commercial crimes. And this section sp speaks about um, how uh, these people should be disciplined and probably punished with a provision for recovery of misappropriated funds. For example, the, the Zinara scandals. We hear people uh, misusing millions of money, but then they are not recovered. So there's that provision for recovery of the lost funds. Uh, there's also a provision for speed detection of breaches in relation to safeguarding the same resources by way of having the quarterly uh, public finance reports submitted to Parliament rather than just wait for the auditor general's report. Uh, then in terms of procurement, they should adhere to the basic principles of procurement which are transparent, fairness, honesty, value for money and competitiveness. Unlike in some cases where certain goods uh, are paid for before they are delivered. I think you have read about the AS Bubble case where a firm was contracted to, to, to to supply furniture with more than 200,000 US dollars, but they only uh, delivered goods worth 29,000. So over 200,000 was not delivered. So that has to be provided for our constitution so that we won't go out into account. Um, this is not the last slide. Um, yeah, it's the same. But then in terms of the Auditor General, I think I've spoken about that in terms of the provincial metropolitan councils. But then what remains is the amendment of the Act to ensure that those uh, local tiers of government are also part of the institutions that are supposed to be audited. Um, I think this marks the end of my quick presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I think from here on, so many situations in a what if we present this What else do we think we should add? What is born? What is my say to sing and touch? Because the sister's quality is in the variety because as money to our resources and to change it. So, uh, in part, we we no money we have to have to live with in a very way in this country. And we can sustain ourselves in our resources for now. Our SDI is still out. But the problem is still out. I'm assisting to manage our resources. So, in general, I was about the day, you know, the process necessary. Kale, more of us are in the consultatives. I was in the way of committee series of who's a whole thing. What else should we add? So, Tina, Joe, when I said to this, what else should we add to this? Eight. Oh, was I in the way of my SDI to see what person I don't get in the world. Unfortunately, I might have missed this in my presentation, but.
but two things. Uh, the first one is in terms of principles. We speak about transparency, accountability, and so forth, but human rights are uh, that which is missing in terms of how the public finance management system should seek to advance human rights in terms of the act itself. And as a matter of principle from the beginning, we want our finance management systems to be linked to how we advance or achieve uh, human rights. And secondly, I think uh, someone might have mentioned it, we need to move away from the cash-based uh, accounting framework in terms of uh, the legislation to a more accrual-based uh, system, which would allow us to have estimates and projections to say uh, what are the assets or liabilities that we have, how much are we going to accrue and so forth, which will allow us to have more uh, informed decisions for better outcomes. Thank you. So, Gaddafi So, these are the things for us to manage our resources. Uh, So that we don't meet when they're going to make budget in December or in November only annually, but it becomes kind of periodic to check the public finances to say how much have we collected, how much we've expended uh, within this period. I think it's important because I think we then decide after to say, okay, let's have a meeting. Some court organize a meeting and call the uh, the committee on public finance or the finance committee to come and talk to us. But then it's not legislated, so I think there has to be a clearly defined mechanism of tracking the budget. And also, I think also we need to um, uh, just. For, for us to be uh, better informed, to actually look at other best practices, other uh, pieces of legislation from other countries to see how they've done it, because they're actually better than us in terms of uh, managing public finances. And then, as I can that in my input, Kulendaba, Eyo Wuti, Kule Whipping System, Ye Parliament. Uh, how does it affect the public finance management? Because I think people don't care, they would just disregard certain uh, regulations and, and, and um, procedures because they know the implications will not affect them or they're not stated or it's up to the lawmakers really to decide or say the judiciary to decide the, the charges. So I think it must be stipulated straight away to say you don't comply, these are the consequences. Well, it is okay for Elizabeth to go to see develop a state house and engage in it. But if I am a tech savant, to go to the city, I'm not going to go to the city. It's okay for our state house to be good, but we cannot have a crawl as the market. Is that a necessity? So those are the other issues that people are talking about. Who would you must cancel a state in the last seven years? Are you mad? Who are my necessities? Who are my needs? Let's use the best thing. So what? My needs. Somebody. My contribution is on on specific taxes or levies. For example, in 2017 budget. Uh, the then Minister of Finance introduced the 5% health uh, levy, uh, which was levied on the telecoms companies' revenues. 
So what you usually find is that uh, at the end of the day, this, this money is subject to abuse. It, is, uh, it ends up being used in certain sectors in which it is not collected for. For example, even for, for Zinara, we find that the money is used for, is end up being used to pay civil servants whilst the roads are not being uh, maintained. So what is needed is to, is to ring fence uh, those funds. When, when funds are collected for, let's say, for the health level, they should be used uh, for that specific, uh, specific purpose in which they were, they were collected for. Just taking some of the comments that I wanted to make. Um, for specific uh, taxes and funds, if I may uh, give an example of the Zinara Act, where an organization collects and then is expected to disperse to, for example, Bulawayo, uh, my, my view would be that uh, Bulawayo collects and then remits to, to Zinara. I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that maybe 10 percent, I mean Zinara needs about 10 percent for their admin work. So my view would be that uh, we know how many cars we can, we can, we can uh, uh, collect and then give them 10 percent. Instead of them collecting and then dis uh, making disbursements which, which are not forthcoming at the moment. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, 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 organizations like that. Uh, for example, EVAT, there are some projects that are of national stat status that uh, local authorities don't need to pay tax. But uh, the current scenario is that uh, you pay tax and then they, they'll give you back that tax. That is uh, uh, prone to abuse. It, it should be the other way around. Uh, they must just uh, uh, promulgate to say uh, because you are doing B sweep, for example, I'm talking about practical Bulawa issues that we have that uh, that we are facing problems. We are doing uh, B sweep where we are upgrading our infrastructure, uh, uh, sewage and, and water systems. We are paying uh, VAT to uh, uh, um, Zimra, and uh, they are supposed to be giving us back. But I thought uh, it is very clear. Uh, once that, uh, that uh, uh, project is uh, designated to, uh, to the national status, then we are not supposed to pay anything because uh, it is hampering uh, uh, displacement of, of funds to contractors. Thank you. Uh, I'm so accounted, but in a basic understanding, but in the account, umundu always the requisition I see a foot or ten. Umele Ube loza raiser, Umelo ever conoza checker, Umele con. I think there are about three people. So Uba Bolese, if you would con upon a Uzava when I'm more or tatai, Ube more foot when only Gavan, I make your Ababa and Luchana and Abi, Emadin, Abula Mamonta, but if we have three or whatever institutions. Omunya is a raiser, Omunya a quality, Omunya a retained days. We are going to manage the nine animals at a Sabonagada. We are going to have a more raiser, and we are ten. The system is easily manipulated. Okay, and I think Florence, also on the same issue that you raised, I think it is within the principles of devolution that local authorities should be mandated to collect their revenues and also make decisions in which the revenues have to be utilized. So it is our hope that the new framework for devolution may also cover that, that particular issue. Thank you. Uh, mine is to say, e -act, the Act should highly emphasize the issue of consultation with the grassroots so that the budgets are informed by the actual needs on the ground. So the issue of, um, of, of consultation must be magnified in the act because the beneficiaries are the citizens so you can't come up with a budget which does not address the needs on the ground so there should be a lot of consultation not in high places like this but even meetings and other places so that 
we know that if we are giving education in Madagara, it's based on the fact that at KZ, there are no enough schools at Binga, there are no enough of this and that. So the act should emphasize, highly emphasize the issue of consulting the citizens. I'm just happy that the mayor is still here. Uh, I've always wondered why do we use the therapy to police our roads when they don't have roads? Why do we arrest uh, the so called illegal vendors and then they pay a three roll? Do they remit that money to council because they are violating your bylaws? Thank you. Uh, in the way public finance management, so, if it's collected, it should go to its intended what use. So, e collection, what you collect on money is another important issue. Okay. I think it talked about ceiling for expenditure. I also feel that we should have a ceiling for borrowing because it seems we have got great appetite for borrowing. So as a nation, there should be a ceiling where we are saying we cannot exceed more than two million. It will force us to manage what we have because if we don't have a ceiling, people will just be borrowing every day. So there should be a need for a stipulated ceiling that is known by everyone. Yeah, in terms of uh, state borrowing, currently the, the budget speaks about uh, certain percentages. Uh, it says the government should not borrow in excess of 30% of the previous year's national budget. Uh, then in terms of the Arab it should not issue overdrafts or treasury bills in excess of 20% of the previous year's budget. And the government should not exceed 40% of the previous year's budget in terms of its guarantees to state institutions. So, in terms of the law, we do have a very clear law uh, as stipulated in Section 300 of the Constitution. But what lacks is the implementation and hence the continuous violation of those uh, sections of the Constitution and the Act. Thank you very much. I mean, I think um, what should be done is, is in our civic organizations. Uh, let's say is Zinara in a collector of our funds, our public funds, or even our public funds, Velandi. Rather, our civic organization, our you, our monitor, our pinder, our you, our footy, our auditor, our Mariana, as it is, the government. Uh, if one uh, government is a monitor, if it is audited, I mean, I don't think we are we are puma agash upon a pana, even though we are going to have a tete baba higher each eighty, Yelan to Munto Yuan, so the good shoot is it a each eighty, I am better to Munto Yuan. Yabo. Thank you. Um, during the discussions here, I noted that the issue of uh, transparency and accountability has been popping up uh, regularly, be it at uh, national government, local government, or other government structures. For example, uh, at Zimra, I'm sure people are interested how much revenue is collected uh, monthly, uh, quarterly, annually, so on and so on. However, Tabo uh, highlighted something interesting on the use of, on the use of uh, IT. So on this uh, alignment process, I'm sure it should be highlighted that uh, local authorities and other 
as parastatals and other public institutions should be compulsory that uh, they are uh, online and they are also if somebody needs to, to, to check how much revenue is being generated, expenditure that has been done. I see when Councillor Chikora was talking here about uh, expenditure and, and stuff like that, they are being asked by the, um, the people on the, on the wards how much has been used on use of roads, how much has been collected. Whereas if the council was on IT, you just click on your iPad, on your laptop, on your cell phone. You can see for yourself how much of your rates were collected, how much has been used. You can tell that there is a deficit. There will be no need to be bothering the councillor anymore. Thank you. Um, emails that I used in Yili invite along Kelapa if you feel gule any information of see a see a delay to this discussion, please use that. I need to So you can actually see how much you owe uh, the creditors to, to Zimbabwe. But in the case of Zimbabwe, that transparency, accountability, and information is not readily available. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, when I'm going to go to the beach, we talked about issues, but uh, the thing that you talked about, Uti, there is an issue of implementation of policies in the constitution itself. Uti, Tina, as a country, we're seeing Uti, it's a game, and the end of each one is a long band. Uti, what is the roadmap that is there in place to actually address the issue? Uti, Tina, in city, the issue is Uti, policies are in place, but the implementation of them. But we cannot be having laws that are not being implemented. But what is the problem behind the implementation? It's a grey area that people are creating so that they exploit the current state. Because you can be talking every day in our cities are addressing it. But if you are acknowledging that there is a situation according to our constitution, but as once we address it, it's an issue of people creating I'm a problem so that they manipulate them or others. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to say that you have to issue a raise when mama in the way audit. But I am a member of departments. I keep my audit reports. My self funuga thing is quiet. Umama financial reports. My self funuga thing are in is quiet. So. Maybe it should be added, there should be an emphasis. So, whether it's from the email, whether it's from the end, I'm a financial report. I'm a good key to a genius. So, I'm a good audit. I'm a good problem. I'm a good audit. An internal audit. A city council. But I'm a good audit. 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 And those angelic hambit which are looking so we may look on up as can only in the by my internal auditors visa visa external auditors on how we can uh, protect our resources it so ngala ma ficha ni nyabo ngaga kulu nga information elis nige yona we keep on the conversations eh eh si kuluma we are there online tina ezim koti even you can contact me for more information. And then in Zabiza, who manager with Ujon as a start of the next session. But a Caesar Ujon, Niza and the e logistic announcement. Spuma Lapasong and Galali Jule, Yimina Besen Lapana, 
litole ama meal tickets enu le transport. Thank, thank you very much. Are you so the But the volume is very low. Maybe you, should, you need to put the mic on the speaker. It's, 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 it's not working. Um, I'm sure we should have uh, asked for them to connect our audience. Just a small um, animation video which discusses uh, some of the pertinent uh, uh, public finance management issues relating to, to debt. Uh, this is one of the ways we are trying to disseminate information to increase in um, uh, strengthening transparency and accountability in the whole spectrum of public finance management in Zimbabwe. Like I, I highlighted uh, at the beginning that uh, for us, uh, the system is not complete without the voice of the citizenry. And we need to make sure that our participation um, is, is meaningful participation and is adding value to the process. We are not only there to rubber stamp issues that have been endorsed and finalized already in some quarters. We need to make sure that uh, when bills, when public hearings are conducted, whenever there's an opportunity for us to participate and contribute, let us uh, make the most out of those. And even when the opportunity is not created, let us demand for that space to make our voices heard. Um, democracy is about the, the, a good and a reciprocal relationship between the governed and the governing, the, 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 the led and the leaders. So if there is no reciprocation, then uh, uh, the, the whole system of democracy yeah, becomes in vain. But I'm here just to say um, thank you so much for the deliberations. Thank you to all our delegates. I'll soon invite uh, the vice chairperson uh, of our um, regional committee here in the uh, southern region to give us a vote of thanks. But before that, I just wanted to highlight to say that uh, we let us continue to engage through various platforms. You can actually write to us those are the uh, means of conducting us. Right to us, you can document probably this forum time was limited. We still want to hear your views. We still want to hear your contributions. We'll include them in our documentations as we are, uh, are actually preparing and processing our submissions to parliament for this process. So we want our, our submission to be as inclusive as possible and uh, capturing every voice uh, of the citizens that we have um, uh, engaged in our meetings. I want to thank you all again. So may we clip our hands for Mr. Melusi, Mr. Melusi Moyo. Who uh, I need to be corrected is the chairperson of the RG. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, uh, at least you have uh, made a correction. It was going to be fine. Um, my name is Mel Smoyo. I'm the Zinco Traditional Chairperson. Can so say Zama Wukwenza in justice, Nintuenche, Fanda Lomutoti, Etola, 
kutweche ipili cha enyoba abe se siti mfungu ipetu isa ibe enfe aifage inyao uh, the snake doesn't have legs so I uh, won't do that um, as a court we appreciate your attendance uh, all stakeholders uh, maybe before I go ahead I would like to observe all protocols uh, seeing the deputy minister have gone out I can see councillors uh, leaders of civic society so all protocol observed we are very grateful as an, as an organization for your attendance uh, uh, I was worried when I was uh, coming to this meeting because the weather was not in favor of us I thought people would be on how high mountains trying to run away from uh, it die some of you cause cyclone Aida but thank God uh, we have just received treason. I hope it will not escalate to heavy rains. Uh, so you managed to brave this chill weather and attended our very important set, um, end of our, uh, meeting on public uh, finance management. We hope and uh, we we'll think the government will be open for listening and they will be reformed and properly manage our public finance because it is very painful in our case uh long back our taxes were being paid by the guys who are working but for now it's a different scenario even my mother at uh, down there to lupane uh, rural she is paying tax anybody who's using a cell phone in zimbabwe is paying tax so Surely, we expect the government to be very responsible in terms of uh, uh, managing the, pub the public finances, uh, not the situation which we are hearing, whereby our government is busy uh, paying unnecessary debts uh, using the public finance. We need these finances to be channeled on uh, the, the right priorities, someone raised priorities. Uh, we know the resources are there. We need all the resources to help each region. For example, instant region, if the government had a right priority, I don't think the disaster which occurred there should have happened, but we have got the government which is very, very irresponsible in terms of using uh, public finance. So as Zim Court, we appreciate your coming here. We will continue uh, having these discussions, having these endeavors. It was so interactive, informative. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time. I know it's lunch time. I would want to take more of your time. Uh, as the Secretary of State, I know we had some more issues. Uh, next time we will try to increase our time, but nevertheless, we will still accept contributions through the social media. We can use our email, um, give us feedback on what you think you didn't manage to raise today, so that we can come up with a good communique in terms of what we want uh, our public um, uh, finance Management Act to be, it is very, very important that uh, I've, I, I've realized that Mike raised something that we don't understand uh, and we don't know uh, some of the, uh, the items in the Public Act, uh, unless uh, my, my, our colleague, Mr. Chikumba, has just given us a run of them, but it is very important for us as leaders to be aware of, of, of the Act so that we can go back to our grassroots where we are leading our organization and tell the grassroots about the importance of this uh, public uh, finance management act. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sure the announcement has been done. Uh, let's enjoy our lunch and let's network and interact during the lunch hour. I'm sure if there are no more announcements, uh, I'm not a pastor, but I always believe that we need a prayer for our food and for those who are traveling back to their homes to travel safer, so we can have a volunteer giving us a prayer. Thank you so much. May the Almighty God do, uh, 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 does well for all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, any volunteer to give us a, a prayer? The 
cyberspace is home to billions of people and is the right platform you need to grow your business. The Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production, and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-711-0290 or 0718-100-235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology. Follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. And you can also check out our website, www.site.org.zw. You can also visit our offices at 45 Moffat Avenue, Hillside, Malawi. Take advantage of this opportunity to expand your business. The cyberspace.